Good evening and welcome back to In The Know, brought to you by The Racing Post and Coral. Uh, once again, and as always, my name is Ross Briley, and I'll be here to take you through five days of glorious Goodwood. Uh, what a jam-packed week we've got, uh, and uh, we've got some cracking uh, races, some fantastic head-to-heads, group races, handicaps, maidens, you name it. Every possible trip you can conceive as well. It is five days of, admittedly, very difficult racing this week. Uh, and made a little bit more difficult by uh, what seems to be the theme of the flat season this year. Uh, that spinning lottery wheel of what is the ground. And after torrential rain yesterday, uh, ground currently soft over at Goodwood. But it's been baking today, thunderstorms tomorrow. And uh, if picking a winner wasn't hard enough, you've got that to contend with as well. But it is hard, of course, at uh, Glorious Goodwood. Uh, and if you uh, do manage to find a couple of winners, you'll uh, also have a, a few bedding slips with horses trapped on the inside rail, desperate for a run, or classic Goodwood, chinned on the line by something that gets out just in time. So it's going to be wild and wonderful for Glorious Goodwood this week. But hopefully we will find something at nice prices for you. But we've got some cracking race, and of course tomorrow we've got the uh, the Stayers uh, Stradivarius versus Trusha, and the ground has come in his favour. We'll see Poetic Flair later on this week, the uh, Derby and Irish Derby form. We'll get another uh, little bit of a test as well, Battle of the Generations uh, in the Nassau Stakes. Uh, Batash versus Dragon Symbol, of course, and on Saturday. Saturday, uh, everyone's favourite uh, uh, punting sprint handicap. It is, of course, the Stewards' Cup. So, like I said, something for everyone. If you're watching at home, do get in touch, uh, like and subscribe on YouTube, and get those comments uh, in as well, and we will put them up on screen. Uh, but like I said, it is a long week as well, so please gamble responsibly at Glorious Goodwood. Let's see who we have got for our inglorious panel uh, on day one. Uh, now, unfortunately, uh, Paul Keeley has been given a better offer. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he's off somewhere else apart from this beautifully air-conditioned studio. But fortunately, we do have a fantastic substitute ready to come off the bench. Sat right next to me is the one and only Mr Graham Rodway. <laughs> well, it was a great uh, introduction. Thanks, Ross. I feel a bit like uh, or Jack Grealish during yeah. the Euro 2020, you know, just always a champion at the bit. And finally, this is my chance. So we'll see if uh, I can make as big an impact as he did. Absolutely. I mean, the social media has been full with get rodders on. That's, uh, that's I can, all I can, I can imagine. I can imagine the clamour. Yeah. And... Uh, oh, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and if you didn't know already, uh, uh, live from uh, what is, um, I assume his living room, I'm starting to believe that it is a green screen with just his living room painted on the background, but it is uh, Tom Siegel, uh, ready and raring to go, Tom. Half painted, Ross, as you pointed out the other day. <laughs> Very fair. Nice, uh, you've got a nice little uh, vase of flowers there. Is the, uh, the better half um, trying, to, uh, trying to make a, give the living room a good impression to the viewers? She said, whatever you do, don't show the painted bit again. So I had to move. I had to scooch like 10 yards to the right. And uh, you've got flowers today instead of half painted walls. No, it's lovely. Uh, uh, thanks for making the effort, Tom. Um, <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. 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 And very much enjoyed the King George. What a great win that was for a fantastic horse. Back to the old days. Old people like me used to remember King George's where the Derby winner won. So so um, took me back to my youth. I loved it. Thought it was great. Yeah, it was a proper race out the weekend, uh, wasn't it? And a, a proper Saturday as well. A couple of uh, really classy feature events, but uh, not too much. Uh, that was the, the question on, uh, on Saturday. Uh, of course, uh, is it too much this week, Tom? Uh, Five-day festivals, four-day festivals? I mean, we could be covering Galway, I guess. It could be, uh, could be tougher. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big Galway fan. I've, I don't think I've been... Uh, I was a member at Goodwood for many years, so apart from Sandown and Kempton, it's the track I've been to most. It's also the track I've lost, lost most money at by a country mile. I'm rubbish at Goodwood, but I'm going to change it this week. I'm going to have a few winners, hopefully. Fantastic stuff. Uh, uh, so that's exactly how we want to open a preview for Glorious Goodwood. Uh, uh, one of our top tips is saying that he's rubbish at the track. Oh, well, never mind. Let's move on. David Stevens, of course, joining us from home as uh, as well, our coral representative this week. Uh, how are you at Goodwood, David? Uh, good afternoon, gents. Yeah, I mean, this is quite literally a home fixture for me. I'm about a Sussex stakes distance away from the course as we speak. It's been a beautiful day here. The sun is shining now, so no rain today, which is great. A few showers around tomorrow, as you said. But Tom mentioned there, you know, racing in his youth, great King George's. Well, for me... If it wasn't for Knight of Mercy winning the Stewards Cup in 1990, uh, I may well have had to have, have, have taken a very different path in life and, and you know, might have 
I've even t- sort of had to go and get a job for a living, which would have been absolutely terrifying. I mean, the thoughts kept me awake ever since. So, yeah, very special meeting this to me, uh, as I say, very, very close by and, and seen some brilliant performances over here, uh, here over the years and hoping for a, a few more of those this week. But I'm a bit like Tom, love the course, but terrible punting record here, which won't surprise you, uh, uh, Ross. And, and Graham, I hope you're going to give me a much stick as, as Kiel's normally does. It's part of your role, obviously. <laughs> I'll do my best, Dave, that's for sure. Rod, uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that you like punting at Goodwood because so far <laughs> the two people I'm going to talk to are, uh, are not giving me much hope. I absolutely love punting at Goodwood. Right, there we I go. That's, better. that's more it. like it. Yeah, no, I like Goodwood. I like betting there because they always got a real good pace there, don't they? That's the one thing you can almost be certain of in races at Goodwood is because you've got that sort of uphill, downhill sort of course. They, they're always truly run these races. And I don't get all this moaning about oh, getting stuck on the inside. And all that. You don't have to come up the inside, do you? You can pull down on the way, come down the wide outside. I, I, you, I mean, Ryan more special. You absolutely don't have to come down the inside, but I, I guarantee at least one of your bets this week will be on the bridle for at least two furlongs. But that's just that's part of it, isn't it? That's the that's the part of the week. Yeah, that's that's part of the fun, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, it took me a while to work out Goodwood because I, 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 partly it, it it sometimes looks like a front runners track, but they don't quite get home. It's a closers track, but they meet trouble. I mean. It's just a track where you just, I mean, you want what is always a good position, which is kind of in the van, switching wide outside and rattling home late. Yeah, it always helps if you're on the best horse, doesn't it? Yes, that is absolutely true. That is absolutely true. I cannot get, I can't get you, I can't get Keels, I can't get Tom, I can't get anyone to talk about track biases or anything. You're always on about the best horse, Tom. Yeah, always. Well, the problem with Goodwood is the best horse never wins. That's my problem with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolute carnage. I don't know what Grant Rogers is talking about. I've I've sat there watching for 40 years. I've watched racing at Goodwood, and I've never had one had a bit had a clear run up the rail yet. So I don't know. I mean, if I was a jockey, I would never go on that rail. I think it's a pace pace knife edge course. I think if you go too fast, you want to be uh, out somewhere sort of out the back finishing. If you go too slow, you want to be in front. Uh, it's one of those things you just can't work out for me. Uh, I've never been able to work it out. I've can work out ridiculous maths algorithms but trying to work out Goodwood is impossible so I'll leave that to Rodders. Rodders can sort us out with uh, some nice winners and I'll just hope for I'm um, in front when the music stops. Okay Tom well before we move on to the first um, uh, if you, you hate punting at Goodwood but you are the purest of the show of course so what are you looking forward to most in terms of uh, sheer quality? Uh, look I love it's I, any good racing I, I'm, I'm for it. I mean I'm a bit tired today because I was up watching all the Olympics overnight I just love top class sporting events i think it's absolutely fantastic uh this week you've got all the group ones there will be my races i like the two-year-old races at, at, at goodwood the handicaps meh not so much for me i'll leave that to rodders but uh the, the good races are the, are the you know the, they speak for themselves goodwood cup nassau sussex stakes vintage stakes you know stewards cup those sort of races are the ones i'll be i'll be playing in properly Okay, absolutely. Well, let's uh, let's move on to the uh, the first. Then, uh, like I said, the ground is uh, currently officially uh, soft, uh, which means uh, it'd be interesting to see. We're talking about jockeys and where you want to go and what you want to do. What they're going to do for this opener? So we've got eighteen runners, uh, which is uh, always a it's always a wide open handicap to kick off the uh, the glorious Goodwood meeting, and it is certainly no different this time around. And the favourite has been quite well supported over the past forty eight uh, hours. Uh, migration is that favourite uh, for David Manuissier at. Uh, at nine to two, May Danny thirteen to two, Majestic Dawn at eight to one, at nine to one. It's good to laugh. Uh, it's ten to one. Uzo eleven to one. Cockalorum twelve to one. Johnny Drama and Caradoc and bigger prices. The rest. Uh, and again, we're talking about best horses and where you want to be. You know, over the past few years, we've had May Danny kick on from the front and make all in this. We had uh, Fires a couple of seasons ago who weaved a passage down the rail from last. It um, it's uh, it looks a looks a bit of a, a nightmare on paper, Rodders. But we do have some nice progressive horses. Yeah, it's a typical Goodwood handicap, isn't it? It's good it quality, and um, the favourite is probably the right favourite, Migration. There was a lot of money for this horse last time out when he mm. ran at um, Salisbury. I think he was like 16 to 1 in the overnight prices. He opened at 8 to 1 on course and went a 4 to 1 favourite. They absolutely smashed him. Race didn't really pan out to suit him. It was over a mile, got a bit messy, a bit muddling pace. He absolutely flew home after finding trouble in running. Huge eye catcher. Mm. But, of course, what are we going to see from him here? We're back up to a mile and a quarter. Is he going to be able to back that up? A mile and a quarter is his best trip. On All of his best forms are over a mile and a quarter, so it promises to suit. Um, yeah, I think I think he's, he's, he's the one to beat, isn't he, Migration? Yeah, he's one of those ones. He's clearly one of those horses that people are going to put in their, 
their first day multis and, uh, and try and get decent prices to uh, to roll up. But like I said, he has been found in the market at nine to two. Um, what did you like in this uh, race? What stood out at a, a slightly bigger price? Well, I'm a bit hesitant to say it because. David has already told me how, how, how bad his record is on this show, yeah, yeah. and he t tells me that he fancies this one as well. But I really like It's Good to Laugh. Right, okay. For, for Jenny Candlish. Um, was beaten like a mile on his final start for Clive Cox. Switched to Jenny Candlish last time out. Completely turned his form around. Was beaten a short head at Chester over a mile and three and a half furlongs. Didn't quite get home, maybe. Just headed in the final stride. He's got plenty of form over this shorter trip. I just thought he looked like a, an absolute certainty to improve for that first run for the yard. And he, she's booked Oshie Murphy to ride, of course. Mm. Um, so that's a positive. Uh, I don't think there's anyone riding better at the moment than Oshie, Oshie Murphy in Britain. He's absolutely flying along. So it's good to laugh for me, Ross. Very well. It's good to laugh. It is a nine to one shot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Three runs over this trip on soft ground. Second, second, second. So an absolute place pop banker on paper. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm trying not to, to, to get too far heavily involved in the ground here like, because we don't yeah. really know what it's going to be like, do It's not going to be like, fast though, is it? It won't be fast, but yeah. how soft will it be? Uh, I just said to you, just off air before we came on, that that is the, the conversation that drives me the wildest, and I know that's why you've asked that's me the why question. Asking, yeah, exactly. How soft will it be? Uh, soft enough, but not too soft, hopefully, for day one of Goodwood. It's good to laugh then at nine to one uh, for the other at Goodwood. Uh, we've got a social comment as well. Like I said, if you are watching at home, get your selections in throughout the week. Kieran Catterson says, May Danny won this last term. Mark Johnson has a fantastic record in this. Look no further. Massive chance. Yeah, May Danny uh, was uh, given a dream ride uh, last year in this race and given a bit of a blinder behind a well-handicapped horse last time out to set him up perfectly as well. But there's loads of this, uh, uh, loads of runners in this, uh, Tom, that uh, are in good nick. Um, just having a look at it as well. In terms of age groups, we've Obviously, most of these handicaps are made up by progressive four- or five-year-olds, but the um, last 10 years uh, has been dominated by the age group. 2002 was the last time a horse aged six or older won. So we do have a few uh, old-timers in this. Um, are, you, uh, uh, are you fancying anything at a decent price here, Tom? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with Rodders. I think it's good to laugh. has got a very good chance. The other one I like is Lucanda for, for Rafe Beckett, who was second in the Cambridgeshire last year off a higher mark. Ran in the John Smith's Cup last time, uh, nearly stumbled, nearly got brought down after two furlongs, got sort of lit up a bit by that and finished fine. Finished off the race quite well. I think he finished 10th or 11th or something like that. Uh, I thought strong pace, it's bound to be a strong pace in this, as Rod has pointed out, May Dunley. I don't like Mark Johnson's horses on soft ground, so I never, ever will back a Mark Johnson horse on soft ground. It's just one of my one of my things. So I'd be against his two. I was at the start of the week I was very keen on Dream with me down the bottom of his. I thought that was gonna take a massive step forward on fast ground. But if as we say, we don't really know what the ground is, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be soft with the amount of rain David Stevens is gonna tell us about he had yesterday. I think it overflowed your swimming pool, didn't it, Mr. Stevens? <laughs> no, the tennis court, Tom. Tennis court, oh sorry. Tennis tennis was off this morning because of the rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's going to be really. I think it's going to be quite soft. So I just fancied Luke Candice to run well, but I definitely get the it's uh, good to laugh or whatever it's called uh, uh, theory as well. As for migration, he would be my number one choice. I think he's got a, mag a, a great chance. Just price thing. I think when he was eight, nine to one earlier in the week or yesterday or whatever it was, good. He was a good price. I mean, nine to two. Is he going to bounce on the back of that run? When he was uh, last year, he uh, well two years ago when he was running. He, he wasn't exactly suggesting he was thrown in off this mark. I think the race at Salisbury sort of fell apart a bit, but I, he's clearly he's clearly a horse that's that's got a good chance. I know the connections really fancy him, so migration would have to be on the list. But for me, it's Lucanda and it's good to laugh would be my two against the field. Okay, yeah, I'm in, uh, I'm in agreement with uh, with Lucanda as well. Yeah, I thought he looked a bit overpriced, uh, Tom. Obviously, the the 18 box is uh, an interesting. Um, choice for Hector Crouch, but you're right, there should be, in theory, quite a bit of pace. Cockalorum, Data Protection, May Danny, Majestic Dawn, Victory Chime, Johnny Drama, Sky Defender. Uh, Graham, it looks, it looks like there could be a bit of a burn up here. Yeah, yeah I'm not worried about... Oh, sorry. That, uh, the, the, thing, the thing that always worries me, and I don't know what Tom was going to say, but he may be using a season like that, is, is that you never quite know... Yeah, yeah, every time it looks like it's going to be a burn up. All the jockeys go, is this going to be a burn up? Yeah, so we won't. You, you go on and then someone will go, oh, I've got a solo here. And exactly, yeah. we've seen it before. Yeah, we've seen it time and time again. Uh, but hopefully... What I was going to say, Ross, is that sometimes when it, the ground's a bit soft, they want to go away from that far rail as mm. well, don't they? Sort of come up the middle. 
especially, I mean, last couple of seasons, I mean, apart from May Downey, quite a lot of the winners came up in the middle on the first day of the, of the meeting. So as for draws, I'm, I'm not really worried. I'm really not worried at the start of this stage of the, of, the, of, the, of the meeting. I think when the rail comes down on Friday and the ground's quicker, you know, in that Unibet mile, in the mile on Friday, you, you, you have to be drawn uh, low. But at, at this stage, I don't think it's a great issue. No, fair enough. Yeah, you're right. On softer ground, they do tend to uh, to fan out all over the track. So, uh, yeah, hopefully Lucanda uh, will get involved in this opener. David, how many places have we got for this fiendish opener? And what's the story of the market? Obviously, Migration, who is pretty much contractually obliged to get back to every time he runs, has been supported. But is there anything else that caught your eye? Yeah, five places each way on this to get us off to hopefully a, a, a decent start. Migration is actually now four to one really shortened all afternoon well been shortened now for a couple of days so that's going to be favorite for sure may danny 12 pound higher than last year jim crowley couldn't ride obviously 12 months ago he's on board this year hopefully get him off to a good start uh, lucanda who tom fancies is 12 to 1 and as graham said i do like it. it's good to laugh as well but don't worry rodders it's good to laugh when this things get chin because of an unlucky run and of course it's good so there will be the hard luck stories but we have our beaten by a length offer so if your horse this week on every goodwood race is beaten by a length or less, you will get a free bet up to £10. So a little bit of insurance there. As I say, we know there'll be hard luck stories. Whatever Rodder says, that's what this track is all about. Dave, Dave, do they have to be second when they're beaten by a length? <laughs> oh, yeah. or no, no, be... no, no. As long as it's within a length of the winner. So no, it could be a blanket finish, could be oh, could be eight horses. Right, just checking it is in the length of the winner because um, you know if you if you get beaten a length into sixth you don't get your each way money back that would be that would be lovely. Uh, okay, so let's just reiterate selections for the opener then, Graham. Yeah, it's good to laugh. It's good to laugh. It, it is. is. Uh, otherwise, you will cry, Tom. Uh, yeah, I like it. it's good to laugh, but Lucanda for me. Okay, and I'll go for Lucanda as well. And I think David, I think to be fair, we've got an 18 runner race here, and between the four of us, we only fancy two horses. Yeah. I mean, look, it's good to laugh, and we've, we've given you the forecast as well. I mean, what more do you want? There we go. The forecast for 7th and 8th, potentially. Uh, but, uh, OK, the, the Chesterfield Cup gets us off to a, a difficult start uh, tomorrow, but we are in pretty much agreement of the two horses that look decent value in the market. It's good to laugh and Lucanda. Moving on to a very different race entirely. It is the Vintage Stakes here, a, a group two for the juveniles, uh, over seven furlongs here uh, and a uh, fairly small field here, just the seven of them lining up and a real mixture of form lines uh, as Lucille and Berkshire Shadow are two to one joint favourites uh, here at July uh, at Stakes and Coventry uh, winners, of course. Eldrick Jones, 11 to two, The Acropolis, 15 to two, Angel Blur, 9 to one, Austrian Theory, 20s and Secret Strength is the 33 to one outsider here for the Vintage Stakes. Uh, you love the juvenile races here, Tom, so I'll let you uh, wax lyrical about this. Obviously, we have a, a couple of uh, last time out group race winners. Which of those two form lines did you prefer, first things first? I think in terms of form lines, I prefer Lucille's because uh, I think the, we all know the Coventry's working out like, you know, it's worse than, you know, Reading's performance on a Saturday most weeks. I mean, it, it, it's, it's I think Katara won out of it, didn't it? But all the others have been well beaten. So I think you might have had a draw advantage well that day. But you can't help but win a Coventry easily going away. So I'm not writing him off by any means. But in terms of form lines, I think Lucille's run might be a that little bit better. I thought he did well to win given how much energy he, he used up early on. I don't think either of them are unbeatable by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think the two-year-olds, with the exception of the Chesham at Royal Ascot form or any of the group races run so far is that good. So it's tempting to look for something else. I would perhaps throw in the Acropolis down the bottom, who I thought uh, had no chance the way the race went at Royal Ascot. He was too prominent from a wide draw. And then he then he came out in the uh, Group 3 Go Bez Go race at, uh, at, at uh, the Curra on Irish Derby weekend and was sort of made the running under Frankie Dottori. It was just a bit of a weird run. I thought he might run better. Whether he can beat the two at the top, I don't know. And an old friend of mine, Angel Blur, who ran on Saturday, it's a really, really quick turnaround for him. Uh, I'm quite interested in him too, although I do remember uh, Hendrik Hector Crouch rode him at Pontefract and said he didn't really like the soft ground. So I think he might need to dry out for him. Personally, I'd probably just go for Lucille, but it's, uh, it's, it's wide open, I think. Yeah, it does look uh, a fairly tricky uh, race here. Lucille two to one, Berkshire Shadow two to one. Uh, Richard Hannon Senior had a fantastic record in uh, in this race. He won it four years on the bounce with some nice horses. But Richard Hannon Junior, uh, eight runners and only two plays so far. So Lucille does have to uh, break a, I won't say a hoodoo. Oh, it's not not 
not particularly big sample size, Graham, but um, you know, his dad made a bit of a, a habit of this and it hasn't worked out for him yet. But Lucille, got to have a big chance. Yeah, he does train his juveniles a little bit differently to his dad, doesn't he? Does, he? Yep. Richard Hannon Jr. He does bring them along a little bit slower than, than maybe um, his dad did. But um, Do you think that, I mean, he's running a, a more experienced juvenile here than he has done in the past, that might? Possibly, yeah. It, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because Lucille had a bunch of the horses that uh, Berkshire Shadow had behind when he won um, uh, the July Stakes at, at Newmarket. So you're weighing up sort of collateral form with what I think was a pretty good individual performance by Berkshire Shadow. If you throw away all the rest that's happened in behind, admittedly it's a very poor race, of course, um, according to subsequent form, only Qatar has won since, a bunch of them have been beaten. But Berkshire Shadow was well on top finish. I looked at the sectionals of the race last, uh, last night and, and I think he ran the final two furlongs 0.35 seconds quicker than anything else, which is... He's looked a, uh, in that, in, on fast. his debut when he came from God knows where as well, he's looked a bit of a... Mm. A bit of a freak, potentially. So he could just be better than the race. Yeah, very, very good overall time as well. Mm. So if you've got decent overall time, very good sectionals towards the finish. Yes, the race wasn't great, but I think that this horse has got pretty smart amount of latent ability. I was beating myself up a bit about writing him down to tip him in this race because, as a tipster, I hate tipping favourites in juvenile races like this when they're all lightly raced and you're looking for something to come and beat them. But I just couldn't get away from him. I think he'll win, Berkshire Shadow. Okay, Berkshire Shadow, two to one joint favourite for the uh, the Balding team. Um, I thought uh, it's a shame. It's a shame we haven't got eight runners because um, I, I'm going to try and. Oh no, I don't need to talk you into it, David. You got we're going three places. Is that right? <laughs> it is fi uh, a fifth. The uh, the first three. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we're giving it away first few races tomorrow. Oh, that's all right. Well, in that case, I don't need to talk to you into uh, to letting me have three places on the Acropolis. Who. Um, the dam's form is all on soft ground. Um, it, it, all its relatives are on. But on how soft, soft is it going to be exactly? <laughs> how soft is it going to be? You know, <laughs> it's not going to be fast, Graham. It can't be fast. It can't be fast. Uh, he was rolling about all over the place. I thought at, uh, at Ascot, he didn't seem the, the race didn't unfold in the right place. He, he he's just changing his legs. He didn't seem to settle on the fast ground that day. Um, it was uh, softish when he won at uh, at Listol a couple of starts ago, um, and I thought the Acropolis was. A bit overpriced. Three places, fifteen to two. He's uh, he's absolutely the type of uh, bet I like having a juvenile race, and uh, for it to finish a short head fourth. So um, the Acropolis, then for uh, for me at fifteen to two. Uh, David, uh, talk to us about this market. It appears Boxer Shadow was clear favourite, but has there been a bit of loose sale support? There has, yeah, which has, has, has brought them together in the market now, two to one joints. And and it's like Rodders and I have shared a script tonight because everything he said about Boxer Shadow, I agree with. I just add in. The trainer form. I mean, Andrew Balding just having an amazing season. Uh, I mean, he got Bangkok to win the big race at York on Saturday. And just to shout out, actually, Kills, if you are watching, you said my half half would, wouldn't be in the frame at York. You were spot on. Sadly, Armory was even further back than my half half was. So we were we were half right. But uh, yeah, Berkshire Shadow for me, two from two. I think he'll make it three from three. Yeah, and uh, Tom also said that uh, he uh, he has more speed and he might be better over a mile than my half half. Let's not get too distracted, Tom. But um, you know, he showed a burst of speed and. And got out, got out, battled and outstayed. Yeah, Myler for sure, Ross. He'll be back at a mile before you know it, that horse. Mm. OK, the vintage stakes then tomorrow, uh, seven furlong juvenile contest. Uh, Tom, what's the tip? Uh, look, I'm, I'm, I won't be having a bet in it because I don't think it's a great race. Uh, I think it's between the two with, with group race form. Uh, like you, I think the Acropolis is the fly and the ointment. I would personally just slightly prefer Lucille, but it's a tough one. That, that There's not much between them. OK, uh, Lucille for Tom then. Uh, Graham, you're uh, disagreeing completely. Yeah, I think Berkshire Shadow will win. Again, it, it's price dependent. I'm not sure I'd want to be backing him at very short price because there's just so many unknown quantities in the race that could bounce bounce out and over and beat you. But I think that he definitely deserves to be favourite. And if I could get a bit of 5-2, to two, I'd be on. All right, Berkshire Shadow versus Lucille. Tom versus Graham. Winner buys Keeley the drinks. Uh, and uh, I will go with Harry the... Oh, he doesn't. I haven't got enough money to buy Keeley the drinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. That is fair enough. Uh, um, that's why I'm not playing this game. I'm going with the Acropolis at 15 to two. David, who uh, who's wins the vintage for you? I think Rodders is being greedy. I think two to one Berkshire Shadow is a terrific <laughs> price. Very well, two to one Berkshire Shadow. It is for the vintage stakes out there at 2:25. Seven furlongs again. The distance for the third race on day one of Glorious Goodwood, uh, but this time uh, we've uh, got the uh, the older horses uh, taking their chance against each other, uh, and it's a uh, really competitive renewal of the Lemex Stakes uh, Group Two contest over seven furlongs, uh, three-year-olds and uh, and older, of course, and the admirable Space Blues. 
uh, is uh, quite a uh, quite a decent prize by books of things at nine to four at the top of the betting. Creative Force eleven to four. Kinross eleven to two. Safe Voyage is seven to one. Uh, it is ten to one. Happy Power 14's Real Appeal. 18's Duke of Hazard and twenty to one. Fundamental and bigger prices. The rest here for this uh, uh, quite warm lineup. And uh, Space Blues uh, trying to do what Sir Dance a lot did a couple of seasons ago, and uh, Nair did uh, quite a few uh, years ago for Gerald Butler, and win this race uh, two years on the bounce. And um, he's an incredibly classy horse, Space Blues. I was expecting to be significantly shorter in the uh, the betting, as um, he's, he was so impressive in this race last year, and he's a he's a horse. Punter seem to like to back, especially given the the yards record at the moment. Yeah, he came into this in a different sort of preparation last year, didn't he? He'd, he'd run awfully at Maidan, and then he came in and he'd won a couple of races in Britain. I think he won a Haydock Longchamp, and then he was right at the top of his game. Came into this race and absolutely pummeled them, didn't he? He's a real seven furlong horse, isn't he? It's he a is. specialist trip, obviously seven furlongs. I was just having a look. He's, he's, he's seven furlongs, six wins, two seconds from eight starts, and the two seconds were on straight track. So he's unbeaten at this trip round about. Yeah, he loves it, doesn't he? This yeah. is his bag. But, of course, different preparation this year. Mm. Hasn't run since Maydam, when again he ran abysmally. He seems to throw in this Maydam flop now every single uh, season. Uh, he's got a decent record fresh, so you might say, oh, well, he'll, he'll be fine, he'll get away with it. But um, that's certainly a concern. And so is the draw, Ross. He's drawn out in Stall 12. Mm. That is, um, I know he won it last year from Stall 10, but Stall 12... It's very wide, isn't it? Around seven furlongs there. Of course, the start is on the bend, so you're right on the outside. Yeah. Uh, I did the, the figures on, on the race um, over seven furlongs in, in this race. And, um, yeah, the, like most seven furlong races are good. The higher you go, the worse it gets. Anything over six is is not great. Yeah. Buick rides his track incredibly well, though. So, I mean, you've got the right man on board, at least. Yeah, and, he, and he'll, be, he'll drop in, won't he? Yeah, he's he that will. sort of horse. He'll drop in, and then he'll get caught on that rail, and then it'll be whether the gap comes. So, you know, if you want to back him at a short price, you, you are risking that the gaps might not open. Yeah, which um, they didn't, for example, for Safe Voyage in this race last year. He'd have a chance. He's back to his best. Kim Ross has um, maybe uh, not been seen to his best um, on quite a few starts. But when he's good, he looks very good. Creative Force was an eye catcher. Uh, Happy Power's got course form. So, like I said, Space Blues is a class act, but there are quite a few alternatives. Uh, what did you come down on the, uh, the Yeah, side? I, I thought his stable mate Creative Force were, was the one to be on... I'm, I thought it was hard to choose between Creative Full Space Blues and Kim Ross mm. in terms of ability, but the draw swayed it for me in that Kim Ross is also wide uh, in 13, so he's even wider than Space Blues, whereas Creative Force is in Stall 2. The funny thing about this race is Stall 1 wasn't great either. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe yeah. maybe horses, they, you know, if you miss the break, they come across, you get in a mess, but Stall well, 2 like was said, if okay. You, if you're going from kind of 12 or 1, like I said, you, you're stuck on the rail or you switch to the rail potentially to save ground, anything else in between, maybe not so bad, but... It's, it's tough doing draw. Draw stats is, is a bit of a nightmare because you often have horses who win from a draw and then you watch the race back and I'm, they've, I'm, not gone, they've not run to the draw at all. <laughs> exactly. I, I'm not really a huge draw man. I don't, yeah. can't believe I'm sitting here going There's on about it. There's a lot of draw chat going but, on, but, but it's Goodwood, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, is it, is that sort of track? In. It's sucking me in. And, and In terms of pure ability, I just make it between the three. Creative Force, Kim Ross and Space Blues and I'm just purely on the draw. Stall two, I think that's good enough for Creative Force. The big question is, Graham, though, is how soft is it going to be? <laughs> that is a big question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for you to answer me. Well, we'll see. Maybe if we get to the end of this broadcast, we might, we might answer that question. Uh, OK, Tom, uh, we're talking about classy horses. So, like I said, you are the purest uh, in the uh, the pack. And um, Space Blues uh, versus Creative Force, two very, very classy uh, Group 1 quality animals. Yeah, uh, Graham's got it spot on, I think. That's exactly what I would have said, that the, the, the difference this year is the preparation for Space Blues. I think he's right. He's good. He's right. He is good fresh. And he was at his best fresh last year when he when he won at Haydock. I thought he was a bit laboured that day. Uh, i not worried about draws at all in this race. I think two of the last three have been right wide. I think Space Blues was wide. I think uh, when David Simcox's horse won it at a massive mm. price, I can't remember what it was called now. Breton Rock. Breton Rock. Yep, Breton yep. Rock was 15 when he won it. Uh, I think it just depends on the pace they go. Hopefully they'll go a strong pace because if they go a strong pace, I think Creative Force will be in trouble from track two. Because I think that's where just where you don't want to be unless he makes the running. If it, I always find at Goodwood that the worst place you can be is second or third on the rail. Because you just never get out. If they go too fast, the one in front of you drops back in your face. You can't get out. If they go too slow, everything goes around the outside of you. So that would be my way for him. I think he's the most likely winner. I was really impressed with him in the Jersey Stakes. I was also thought he ran a cracker in the July Cup. 
Uh, both races I'm still sort of lukewarm with at the moment. We'll see what happens in future, even the July Cup. I'm still a little bit lukewarm about because of the nature of them all switching all over the place in that race. But I think he's the most likely winner. The one I've backed is Kinross, though. I know he's drawn wide. I just think that when he's had seven furlongs on soft ground, he's won. I thought he was really impressive the other day at Haydock. Uh, went three or four clear very, very quickly. Sort of idled in front. Seven furlongs on soft with some soft in the ground. How soft is it going to be, Rodders? I don't know. But uh, I think I think he's got everything for it in his favour. And provided they go apace, which I think they will. I think they will, as we as they tend to. Uh, I think he'll I think he'll finish up the outside. So I think he's the fly in the ointment against the the good old pair of them. I prefer Creative Force. Okay, uh, Creative Force and having a four shot. Yeah, Kim Ross because uh, he was the one, wasn't he, Tom, on his debut when he he won at Newmarket in a phenomenal time in a in a performance that you thought this is surely a Group One horse and um, obviously things didn't necessarily go to plan, but he uh, he does have that fast finish which uh, which can work out round here. So. Uh, Kinross, a seven to one, sorry, eleven to two shot uh, over at uh, Goodwood. There has been money for him. Uh, David, talk us through the Lennox Stakes from uh, your your bookmaker's perch. Yeah, I mean, Space Blues has been favourite from the start, but Creative Force is closing in on him uh, for all the reasons the guys have just said there. Kinross, very popular, seven to one into eleven to two. I just give a shout out to Jesse Harrington's real appeal. That ran really well at Leperstown last night, uh, last time, sorry, and the fact that. That one's travelling over, perhaps a bit of each way value. But like London buses, we've got a couple of price boosts uh, to do with this race. Firstly, obviously, Godolphin, very strong hand. And what a season they are having. Charlie Appleby in particular. Can they win this race? Well, they got the first two in the betting. That was an 8-11 to 11 shot. That is now a 5-6 to six shot that Godolphin win this Lennox. But also, we've heard from Tom. He likes Kinross. In the first race, Graham like it's good to laugh. So both of those pair to finish in the first four in their respective races it was six to one, now eight to one. So, a couple there to get stuck into in this uh, Lennox stakes. Okay, a couple of angles there. Godolphin to win the race, or uh, it's good to laugh and Kinross to both finish in the top four, eight to one out from six to one. Of course, uh, Godolphin did have a one two in this race uh, back in 2016 where Dutch Connection beat home of the Brave. So, uh, uh, they do tend to run one. Uh, pretty much every year, and they do tend to perform. Space Blues and Creative Force at the top of the betting there for the Lennox Stakes. Uh, moving on, though, to the feature race of day one of Glorious Goodwood, and it is the Stayers once again for the uh, the Goodwood Cup here, and a nice field to have amassed to once again uh, throw some darts at Stradivarius. 13 to 8 at the so at soft ground, and the money once again has come for Trushan 2 to 1, 11 to 2 Spanish Mission, uh, 10 to 1 Sir Ron Priestley, 14 Serpentine, and Santiago uh, 20 to 1 Emperor of the Sun, 33 to 1 Bar. Who wins the Goodwood Cup then? Uh, according to our uh, uh, our viewers at home, 35% think Stradivarius, 35% think Trushan. So that's where the Trushan money's coming from. Spanish Mission, 7%, uh, and 21% uh, the uh, the rest. So uh, we can't split the viewers, Tom, at home, Stradivarius versus Trushan. Of course, we were robbed of this matchup at, uh, at Royal Ascot by the the weather arriving 24 hours too late. Stradivarius still managed to uh, find uh, a, a couple to, uh, to beat him. Will Trushan claim his scalp this time around? It's very possible, isn't it? I mean, it, it's uh, his, his performance on Champions Day last year was a, was a total revelation, wasn't he? He was brilliant that day. That was on really, really soft ground. I don't think it'd be anything like that at Goodwood. Uh, I have to admit, I was really disappointed with him in, at Newcastle, true, Shan. I thought he was miles below form. I know people will say that on the figures he ran well off a top weight or whatever. He was giving Mildenberger two pounds and he couldn't beat him. And Mildenberger would be 50 to one to win this. So I thought he was miles below his best at, at uh, Newcastle. That could obviously have been the track, and the and the and the and the conditions and the all weather all weather surface because he looked as good as ever. I thought at Chester on his comeback run. If he leaves that Newcastle run behind, because I think he needs to, I think he's got a great chance of beating Stradivarius. But I've said that I've, I've spent five years trying to get Stradivarius beaten in this race and haven't managed it. Uh, and I don't think the ground is going to be a massive issue for him. He won the Gold Cup, in, which would have been on similar sort of ground when he won by miles, beating Nayef Road. Spanish Mission, you've got to throw in there because he beat uh, he beat uh, the uh, Stradivarius in the Ascot Gold Cup, didn't he? He's another one that probably wants faster ground, but he's also one. He won a Chester listed handicap on sort of softish ground, so he, he'll go well. I'm not so keen on Sir Ron Priestley on the ground, but who knows what how what 
how Serpentine and Santiago are going to run two derby winners. I have no idea. They seem to they seem to be absolutely useless these days, but they could easily bounce back. They've got ability and they've got tons of ability, as we've seen in the past. And but it's just those form figures of seven eights and sevens and whatever you've got thrown in there. I'm not sure I can really fancy one of them. I think it's between the top two. Uh, I would probably just side with Trushan, but two to one is plenty short enough. Yeah, two to one is plenty short enough. He's been heavily backed, uh, obviously, as that rain has come. He's got a, he's got a little bit of a, a fan club, has Trushan. Obviously, not as big as, as Stradivarius' as fan club. Um, I'll be honest, I, uh, I think the only time I've ever backed Stradivarius was when he got beat at Chester uh, in a three year old handicap. And here he is as a seven year old, four time winner of this race. Are you. With Stradivarius, are you in the, the fan club or are you always trying to get him beat? I think like uh, Tom and like most tipsters, when you get a horse like Stradivarius, uh, you're always trying to find a horse to beat him because yeah. he's always going to make the market every time. So he gives you a good opportunity. But of course, he was a win machine for a good portion of his career. But he's not been a win machine recently, has he? In fact, I don't think he's better than a racing post rating of 121, mm. uh, which is what Trushan ran to last time at Newcastle. Uh, since he won the Gold Cup by a million miles just over a year ago. So you're going back a long time now to find him at his very, very best form. And he does appear to be a little bit regressive. However, he was unlucky, wasn't he, at Ascot? Yeah, he didn't, you know, nothing he didn't, went right, did it? No, he didn't get a run, did he? So you got... Where, where would he have... What, would he a bit harsh, second, aren't second, do you think? Or? He must have finished second, you would have thought. Yeah, yeah. But then what's the race panning out in the way he likes? He's a horse with a turn of foot, isn't he? He's, he, he's well suited by races that don't really... They don't go a strong pace, and then he comes and picks them off late. Yeah. He's so, in the one box again. So I mean, there's, there's, there's something that almost happened. Mind, it didn't might it? happen again. It almost happened last year when when he yeah. won this race, didn't he? He was in all sorts of bother, and then he produced that amazing turn of foot that he's got. I just think you've got to be taking him on just because he does look like he's on his way down at the age of seven. All the figures suggest he's on his way down, and you've got all that is on the way up on the figures. Mm -hmm. True, Shan has won run to one twenty one twice in his last three starts was uh, second behind Japan uh, in between. Um, yeah. Rogers, can I ask you about yes. the 121 at yes. uh, Newcastle last time? For me, that was 20 pounds below how we run at Ascot, just on the visuals and on the way I look at racing. You know, I just don't see... I mean, I know handicaps are an anomaly about how figures work. So you have Motta Kyle rated higher than grade one winners, for example, <laughs> by every time he runs in a group, group race getting absolutely thrashed. Surely getting beaten, coming sick in the uh, Northumberland plate is nowhere near winning a Group 1 by eight lengths, or am I mad? Well, yeah, you may say that. And it's good that... Yeah, he, it away. You've got 20 it, minutes it, to explain it, the vagaries it, of... It, it's great that Tom has asked the question because uh, yeah. I had a hand in putting this figure on along along with Keith. Um, and essentially, I mean, this the, the, the time for that race um, in, in, in the Northumberland plate was like 25 lengths faster than the, the Vars over, over the same course and distance just previously on the track. And they finished a lot faster. I think they finished somewhere in the region of 104%. So we were quite keen to be very positive about the race as a whole because it was a good time and a good finishing time. Now, yes, of course, Nicholas T won the race. He's a nine-year-old, but he was unexposed at the distance. And Jim Gold is training every horse <laughs> in his stable to win and improve this year. You know, and, and, and we, we put a figure of, of, um, of 103 on, on, on Nicholas T, which isn't, isn't like miles, miles um, over the top. It's only plus seven on, 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 his, on his official rating. Mm -hmm. And basically, of course, all, all the figures then, then fall, in, fall in behind the winner. You know, so, so Trushan comes out of 121 because of how far he was beaten behind the winner and how much weight he was given to the winner. Now, yeah, I, I, I get the argument that he, he, yeah, he's only given two pounds to Bildenberger and he's not beaten him. That's a little bit disappointing on bare form. But purely on figures, it is a good run. OK, has that convinced you, Tom? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I didn't think it would, but uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Graham, giving it a good go. Um, we're going to have to mention, quickly mention a few others. Obviously, this is the feature race of, uh, of day one. Uh, we've got uh, a Bally Doyle now just... Have they kind of given up in the the staying event, and they're thinking, oh, well, we'll just we'll just throw as many uh, as many darts as we possibly can, Tom, at the race? Because I mean, the profiles of some of these are all over the shop. Albeit, I do think that Emperor of the Sun potentially has a bit of improvement, and he, I thought he ran quite well at Ascot, but yeah, he'd be the one. He's Donica's horse, isn't he? He's he's, he's not. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. By Aiden, uh, yeah, he'd be the one, wouldn't he? Of theirs, I thought that had the most upside in the race, uh, but. 
We've seen it before, haven't we? We've seen these horses come back. I mean, look at Snowfall. Who would have thought Snowfall mm. would be what Snowfall is or Sir Mark's Basilica would be what Sir Mark's Basilica is after their two-year-old campaigns? And they lost more races than they, they won, didn't they? So... So they you, do you just think with the with the pedigrees they've got, Tom, it's just worth you know you turning up and seeing yeah. what happens? Yeah, I mean they've won derbies, haven't they, Santiago and Serpentine? Mm. Where else? You know they stay. They've got to run them, otherwise, what's the point of having them in the in the yard? Do you know what I mean? They've got to run in races like this. One day they will bounce back. They're derby winners. They're proper Group One horses. Can I back them on what they've shown the last six months? No, I, you just can't. They have hardly beaten a horse, have they? I mean Serpentine was. So lamentable on his comeback run. I mean, he was beaten about 400 lengths and he was last. You know, he didn't show a single thing. He ran a bit better last time and Ryan Moore's on him, which suggests they think that he's going to take a step forward here. And it's not beat about the bush. He did win the derby by a long way. And then he ran some good races after that. You know, he wasn't beaten far in the champion stakes uh, at, at, at Ascot. So he could easily bounce back. He's got the latent ability. They both have, but... And what they've shown this year, you know, you wouldn't back them to win the, uh, the Chesterfield Cup, the Handicap, let alone the Goodwood Cup. No. Uh, well, I wonder what RPR they would run to in the Northumberland Plate, though. That is the big question. 412. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David, uh, talk to us about the, uh, the Goodwood Cup. Uh, I, uh, in fact, we've got a couple of social comments first, uh, but we'll get your price views in a second. Uh, Jesus has got in touch. He says, Spanish mission, outright winner. Fingers crossed. Uh, thank you for thank you for, for that, Jesus. I really appreciate you getting in touch again. I'm sure you've got a lot of other things going on. Uh, Jay Badan says, Stradivarius, uh, uh, sunglasses emoji, I, I, kiss emoji maybe, crying emoji, <laughs> top hat, money, bags, dollar sign. Thanks, Jay. appreciate getting in touch. And Craig Sutherland says, fancy serpentine to turn over Stradivarius. There we go, Craig. Well, that is a bold shout indeed. Uh, David, uh, tell us about your bold shouts what have you got you've got some price boosts for the feature race yeah for the first time in my life though i'm with jesus uh, <laughs> i'm a spanish mission fan here mainly with the jockeys inform the trainers inform and there are bits of pieces that give spanish mission i think he's improving all the time incredible to think stradivarius was a four to six shot 48 hours ago uh obviously a combination of the rain it's it's currently very very sunny down here i should say but uh, two to one true shan he's the big market mover but if you do fancy the first two in the betting We've got another price boost. Stradivarius and Trushan to finish first and second in either order. That was two to one. It's now three to one in this Goodwood Cup. Very well, Stradivarius and Trushan to finish first and second in either order. Three to one from twos. David, what wins it for you? Uh, Spanish mission, as Jesus quite rightly pronounced. Yes, of course, yes. Um, albeit historically Spanish missions in the name of Jesus. Maybe not gone that well. Uh, but uh, 11 a two shot there for Spanish mission. Uh, what was the Goodwood Cup? Uh, Trushan for me, Ross. Trushan it is. Tom? Uh, yeah, I'm slightly siding with Trushan, yeah. Okay, very well. And I will also side with, uh, with Trushan, but an eye on Emperor of the Sun at 20 to 1. Uh, that is the feature race uh, of day one then. Uh, and we are, again, switching from one extreme to another. The stayers to a five furlong handicap here uh, not 105 with 17 of them lining up and uh, as you would imagine it's attracted a big field uh, but uh, this is a bit of a, a nightmare race of punters we haven't had um, uh, too many renewals of this uh, this contest but the uh, the winners have all gone off at uh, huge prices just have a look 14 to 1 16 to 1 twice 33 to 1 Tony Carroll 13 to 2 the shortest price in the past uh, seven years and Ridge Ranger at 14 to 1 so it is typically fiendish King of Stars 4 to 1 Rowea at 6 to 1 El Astronaut 15 to 2 with Lord Riddiford 10 to 1 Jabberocki and only spoofing 14 to 1 Embor and 16 to 1 Bar those I'll come to you first Tom because I think it's going to be short and sweet like this race five furlong big field Goodwood handicaps not necessarily your bag but what wins it anyway you are right. It's going to be very short and sweet. The uh, the, the thing about it is Rodders, Rodders will be more au fait with this sort of stuff. There seems every single one needs, seems to need to be a front runner. They seem to be like the fastest horse, fastest five furlong handicap as you can find. It seems like the dash all over again at Epsom. Uh, I know the owner of King of Stars, and he's been waiting for the whole year to run at good, in this race at Goodwood on fast ground, and it had 30 mils of rain yesterday. So he's a bit worried about that. He thinks... He's an improving horse that is going to be better than his handicap mark. And I think he's right. I think he'll win some good races. Ground is a worry. I ended up, I thought there were two or three that, I, that might just sort of get the race run to suit. Only spoofing, won it last year. Bit disappointing last time at Ascot. I think you can throw out Ascot to uh, other tracks, really. And I thought he might get the race run to suit. I thought the huge prices Argon might run well for Scott Dixon. He ran very well in a lifted race at 
Adoc a few starts ago, another horse that, uh, that doesn't like Ascot and has run twice there. And there was one other that was called, where is it? Right up the top, Sunday Sovereign. Thought he might be the type of horse that could run well on soft ground again back at five furlongs. Uh, but you are quite right. I will not be watching this race. <laughs> Even though it will last less than a minute. Uh, but uh, uh, Graham, talk to us about this race because, I mean, just to pick up on what Tom said and what we said earlier, last year's renewal of this, they sent a horse off called Celsius Favourite, uh, who was one of the only, pretty much the only horse in the race who wasn't a front runner either. And the front three were all on the speed and he never got anywhere near them. So, again, the amount of times you think this is going to be a burn up and it doesn't unfold. So, it's. It's a nightmare. Tell us what wins. It's pretty much straight downhill, isn't it? You know, it is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you want to be a front runner, really. You you want you got to have a bit of pace about you yeah. be, to to be competitive in this sort of race at Goodwood with seventeen runners. Otherwise, you're going to end up getting behind. I always find the draws fascinating uh, on the straight track at Goodwood because a lot of people think you need to be up against the stand side. Now, I would argue that you you usually want to be more towards the middle in these sprints. However, on soft ground, if it is soft ground, and depends how soft it is. Depends course, how soft it is, that is the big question. Then the stand side, obviously, is usually the place to be at Goodwood. So depending on how soft the ground is will be dependent on how much of an effect the draw has on this race. For a man who doesn't like studying the draw, Graham, it's, <laughs> it's pretty much your number okay, one topic. This is the most I've spoken about the draw all year, I guarantee you. Um, I thought, again, like Tom, it was absolutely extremely difficult race. Uh, I, I, I wasn't that confident about putting one up. I thought that um, only Spoofing, who won it last year, had a really good chance. I thought he was a bit of an eye-catcher at Ascot last time behind significantly. Um, it caught my eye, but it's very, very difficult. I don't know what's going to happen with the draw. I don't know how soft the ground is going to be. So I'm going to give this one a swerve, I think. All right, fair enough. Giving, I'm not sure. Are we allowed to give them a swerve? I don't know. Contract out, Ross. Sorry? <laughs> Get a contract out. Is that allowed? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure it is. But, but it's happened. But it's happened. Paul Keeley will not be happy. Uh, but uh, I was quite uh, keen on, uh, well, I say as keen as you can be in a race like this, but El Astronaut, who's run twice in this race, finished first and second. This is his first start in a handicap for two years since he won uh, a, a big field uh, race at the Curra. And he's, he's just the exact type of horse you want in this race. He gets on with it from the outset. He, uh, he just keeps on grinding. And he's been, I mean, he's been running in some very... Very tough race as compared to this. You know, he's been behind Winter Power and Kings Lynn the last couple of starts, who are genuine uh, group sprinters. So, El Astronorte for me at 15 to 2. Father Quinn, stable. Uh, David, uh, we've had a, uh, a swerve to my left. Tom hates the race but's put up three. I, I, I dread to think what you're, you're going to throw into the mix. Rodders, you've let me down. This is the sort of race that Kills would have absolutely lapped up. He'd have given us a forecast, tricast. Um, I, like Tom, I too know the owner of King of Stars. Um, he's been well backed, actually, despite the rain coming. He was second uh, on his first run back to a, a good horse called Twilight Call, so I think runs here on Thursday. So look for a bit of a form boost for that one. Uh, it's five places each way. I don't know if that will tempt the boys in, but only spoofing is in there as a 10 to 1 shot. Tom, what was the other one you mentioned? Sunday Sovereign, 16 to 1. Was there one other? Yeah, a uh, big price one, Zargan. I thought he might run well. Uh, yeah, that's 16 to 1 Zargon as well. So there's a few there to get stuck into. But but as you said there, Ross, Rodders, for a man who doesn't like the draw, I tell you, by the end of this programme, we'll have you saying that Goodwood is a punter's nightmare. It won't be long. You've changed your opinion very quickly already. <laughs> there we go. But, uh, I mean, we've still got three races to go. Uh, you can completely change it again. We've got, I mean, it's, it's going to be a long week, Graham. So, you know, if you get stuck into those draw starts from now, you'll be... Uh, uh, you'll be going mad by the end of the uh, the week. So there's a few uh, selections for you for this five furlong uh, sprint handicap at uh, Goodwood uh, tomorrow. Of course, that's the final race that's televised uh, tomorrow. Uh, but uh, we've still got three more races on the card. Again, we've got five days, uh, eight races uh, day one. So uh, again, it's going to be a long old week. But arguably, the last few races are possibly better punting mediums than the opening five. So uh, let's have a, a gander at the uh, the last few. The 4.45 at uh, Goodwood uh, is uh, is up next for us. Uh, just waiting for uh, waiting for a. Sh you don't. We don't have a. We don't have a show. Okay. We don't. I can give the betting. Yeah, take it away, David. I I I was told in the running order that we'd focus on the front five, but we would run through the last three. So um, 
I'm pretty sure I'm doing it right, David. <laughs> Scattering and Harb are the ninth boy joint, joint favourites here, ahead of City Runner at 11 to 2 and Olivetti at 13 to 2 in this tricky maiden. Come on, Tom, who wins it? <laughs> Mark's been very well packed, hasn't he? Debutante by Muhara for Mark Johnson. I like Perotto's brother, Olivetti, mm. for Marcus Dragoni. Uh, Perotto's got good form at Goodwood. I thought he ran quite an, inch, an eye catching race at Newbury. Scattering's another showcasing. Showcasing's the star of Mohatha, and they like soft ground. So Scattering and Olivetti would be my two against the uh, against the Boilback newcomer Harb. Uh, at the prices, I'd go for Olivetti with o Oshin Murphy on, but uh, Scattering's clearly got a good chance too. Yeah, I was quite keen on Olivetti. I thought uh, I thought he ran a really eye-catching race. The Yard won this with Alchemate last year. Uh, Perotto um, made his debut in the same race and then went and won second time out here at Goodwood as well. Um, he completely blew the start and rattled uh, rattled home to finish sixth in what looked a, a warm race, I thought. I mean, there's some good races on tomorrow, but I think he's my best bet, Olivetti. In the he, maiden. In the maiden, in the lowest key race of the day. But he, he loves this meeting, doesn't he, Marcus Trigger? Yes. And years and years ago, he always used to win this this maiden or, or one of these maidens along here. Mm. Um, I've, I don't think that'll win, though. I, I like scattering. Uh, no, that's fine. <laughs> you don't have to agree with me, though. <laughs> I think that uh, it was one of the most eye-catching runs of the whole season, um, uh, scattering's debut, when he was beaten over five furlongs at Newcastle on the Aweather. He finished very strongly. He was very, very green. He was well... Did everything wrong, um, William Haggis. Now, in recent years, William Haggis has had put a bit more focus on this this meeting. Now, he always used to be big on the Ebor and 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 save them up for York. Whereas in the last two two or three years, he's been very strong at Goodwood, um, and I think this is one of his better two years. Going up to six furlongs will really suit Scattering. So, Scattering for me. Okay, Scattering it is. Yeah, for the uh, the Haggis team. Yeah, be some good horses when this set uh, made. And Alchemate, of course, Best Solution was a. Uh, a globetrotting group one winner. We've had quite a few horses who've gone over the the hundred mark in uh, subsequent uh, uh, runnings as well. So uh, there we go. Uh, the show is up on the uh, the screen. The, the boys have uh, have pulled it out of the bag in the studio. Uh, Harb and scattering nine to four joint city runner eleven to two thirty to two Olivetti seventy to two fathers. Anything to add for that one, David? Uh, no, purely to say that obviously I'm contractually obliged to tip one Jim Crowley ride at the meeting, and it'll be Harb in this one. He rode the winner Alchemate last year. But you can tell Rodders is new to this show because I've never seen a man so politely say he thinks a horse that you haven't tipped yeah. will win it. I mean, <laughs> that's not how this show works, Rodders. You've no. got to be much more abrupt than that. Normally, it's um, I, I, Keith, Paul comes on, makes a very good case for a horse. I say, are you worried about this? And he goes, no. And then we move on. <laughs> so that's my move on. But uh, it, it'll have to be pretty good, won't he, this newcomer, to win to win first mm. time out at, at Goodwood? Uh, Vaguely remember some some stats being run out years ago about horses who win on debut at Goodwood and and they tend to be very good if they if they're yeah. able to do so. It takes a little bit of you have to uh, put a lot together, don't you? Yeah, I mean it's a funny track, isn't it, for a debutant? Yeah, it is indeed. So that's my polite way of saying I don't think that'll win. All right, there you go. Very polite indeed. He's getting more <laughs> polite as the uh, as the meeting goes on. Um, but uh, might make us a cup of tea by the last race. Five twenty at uh, Goodwood is the penultimate one. Uh, it's uh, one of two Phillies handicaps to close out the card. Over a mile uh, here, uh, where uh, Angarm and Ricknar are four to one uh, joint favourites for this three-year-old race. Urban Violet nine to two, Pomelo eleven to two, Nebulosa eleven to two, uh, Dalana Jujujo. There you go. That's not how you pronounce it, but it's my best guess. Eleven to two, Ananya twelves and fourteen to one. Bar those. I can't pronounce it, Graham. But I know you fancy it, so please tell us why that horse will win. <laughs> yeah, really fancy Delana Jujo. There we go. Yeah, nice. I thought that um, she is an improving filly. My only concern is how ground the how ground how the ground soft the is going to be. <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, uh, but she wants fast ground. Basically, she's got really good form on fast ground. That she has one on good. So if it's not too soft, she'll be all right. Uh, last time out, I thought was a, was a huge performance uh, at Newbury. Um, she only ran to a, to an RPR of 87, but it was again that was a really good time that day, and she finished off a uh, race very well. And we got um, Tom Marcan doing the steering again, so he will obviously be coming hot off a winner off scattering, having won the maiden. And uh, the only concern, I suppose, having gone on about it the whole show, is the draw. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know she is drawn in stall 11. You know, but. Like anything, when you're a tipster, you know you can pick and choose when you want to use these stats. And Absolutely, I, yes. On this on this occasion, I think I'm going to overlook that. <laughs> that's but a good, that's other a great than that, decision. I think she'll win. All right. Okay. Well, there we go. Selectively uh, choosing, you know, um, uh, 
lies, damn lies, and statistics, and draw biases, I think, Tol. Uh, Dalan, da I'm not even going to say it again. The Mick Shannon horse, one of two Mick Shannon horses for Graham. Uh, this looks a, uh, a good little race, this, though. Quite a few of these coming into it in good nick. Uh, what's your pick for the penultimate? Couple of non-runners for you there, Rod Rodders. So he's only in seven at the. Uh, she's only in seven at uh, nine at the. I can't even do maths these days. Never <laughs> minus two is nine. Come on, so guys! It's a five-day meeting here. It's a. <laughs> Gee. It's all right. Uh, Kilch is back tomorrow. Oh yes. Yeah, Easy. He's, he's Rodders back tomorrow as well. <laughs> Rodders is here. Oh God! Is he back tomorrow? Am I off tomorrow? I can't remember. I'm going back. <laughs> I think it's just me. It's just me in a hall of mirrors tomorrow, <laughs> talking to myself. I like. Land G Juju as well, Rodders. I do like her. I thought she were, I thought she was really impressive at Yarmouth when she won, and I thought I agree with you about her form last time. I think that's very strong. I actually thought she was one of the better bets on the card. I thought she'd win. Dal what I can't pronounce it. The one we're getting with me, trained by Mick Shannon. Very well, Dalan Juju. Uh, possibly at 11 to 2 here for this uh, open race, but quite a few of the chances. I thought Pomelo would have a chance, depending on how soft the ground is. Nebulosa <laughs> would have a chance, and uh, also uh, I thought Angarm had a, a big chance as well uh, in that uh, handicap. But producers giving me a hint there by uh, already putting the betting for the 550 up on the screen. So let's move on to the finale on day one. It is another Phillies handicap, this time over six furlongs, and uh, it is the first renewal of this contest where Gell Horn is 11-4 favourite, Lovely Breeze 3-1, Caroline Dale is 9-2, Mountain Brave 11-2, 7-1 Shepherd's Way, Isabella Swan is 15-2, Crazy Luck is 10-1, and again, another couple of non-runners here, Mejtham and Chakoya, the absentees, which um, I thought Graham potentially gave Mountain Brave an easy time out in front here for the, uh, the Johnston team. You were saying earlier that it's quite easy to come on a Goodwood and just say, Johnson's got a good record, Johnson's got a good record. But to be fair, this is the first one of his I fancy. Yeah, it would be very dull if we just wrote that every time, wouldn't it? Yeah. Johnson, Johnson, that you could do, actually do it and, and, and it'd be just true. Just copy and paste. Yeah, all the yeah. time. Um, yeah, the only problem, of course, like I was saying about, about the tactics is if you think he's going to get an easy lead, maybe some others think they might get an easy lead and they go for it as well, but mm. who knows. I, I like Caroline Dow for, for uh, David Lofnan. Um, third in the Princess Margaret last uh, year over six furlongs has not run over the trip since being kept to five furlongs now quite a keen going type so that might be well why but uh, they're sticking a hood on and I think uh, a downhill uh, five furlongs might really suit her because she she goes she, she goes with a bit of zest she really she really gives it some from the gate so I think that uh, Caroline Dow if, if they can if that hood just uh, settles her down a little bit then uh, she might see out this trip and she'll improve for it Caroline Dale then for David Lochnane and Pat Cosgrave uh, for the the finale then. Tom, send us out with a winner in this uh, small but trappy field, please. Six furlong handicaps at Goodwood. Mm. <laughs> Things that make you go, um. Uh, Gellhorn would be my selection. Ran very well in that uh, court race we were talking about. Twilight Calls, King of Stars race at Newmarket. Very good time race, that. Uh, came back and won at Newmarket next time, beating Lovely Breeze quite easily. I, just by showcasing, I don't think the ground will be an issue, depending how soft it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, so she'd be my selection, Gellhorn. OK, Gellhorn it is then, 11 of four shots. Uh, so uh, Caroline Dale for Graham, I'll go for Mountain Brave. Tom's with Gellhorn. I guess that's Lovely Breeze for you then, David. Uh, I hadn't looked at this race, I'll be honest. I didn't realise there were eight <laughs> races on this card. And I'm actually going racing tomorrow, and I was going to be professional and stay off the rosé. But having listened to the, the last 10 minutes of this show, I think having a drink is the only way to go. Uh, absolutely depends on uh, how ground the soft is, though, doesn't it, David? <laughs> <laughs> I can report that the, uh, the sun has currently gone in at the moment, so... The sun isn't out anymore. That's what I can say. There we go. OK, uh, so uh, the finale then tomorrow, the 5.50, it is an eight-race card on uh, on the first day of Glorious Goodwood. And uh, that pretty much brings to an end those previews. So we've warmed up. It's Monday night. Uh, the uh, the weather's all over the place. There are thunderstorms, of course, uh, also forecasts for, uh, for lunchtime tomorrow. So... How soft the ground is is the big question, of course, uh, for for day one. But uh, regardless of the uh, the conditions, uh, we do have five days of top class racing. We do have five days of naps uh, to to come out as well. And Graham, you're uh, you're just stepping in for today, so uh, no pressure at all. But this is your one chance to throw in a winning nap. <laughs> if it loses, I won't be back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah it's Delaney Jujo in the 
5.20, as long as the ground isn't too soft. As long as the ground isn't too soft and the draw isn't too bad. OK, Tom, nap on day one. The real nap is Njord in the uh, mile at Galway, but the nap at, at Goodwood is Kinross. I just think he's got a chance, even though he's drawn wide, of beating the two good Alpine horses. OK, very well. Let's not, let's not even get on to Galway. Here for, uh, five <laughs> days of Goodwood and eight race uh, at cards are too much. Uh, I'll go for, again, I know it's a, it's a cracking uh, uh, card tomorrow, but the maiden, I do think Olivetti's got a very good chance for Marcus Sutragoni and Oshin Murphy. Uh, David, day one nap, please. Uh, one final shout out, beaten by a length on every Goodwood race this week for those hard luck stories. But the nap, let's get it out of the way nice and early. We've shown tonight it is indeed good to laugh. There you go. It's good to laugh in the opener. Gentlemen, thank you uh, for, for that. Like I said, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a long week. We've got five days to, uh, to come. This is uh, in the note. It is, of course, glorious Goodwood uh, coming up throughout the next five evenings. Like, subscribe, get in touch, share it, get it out there. That's what we need to do for the, uh, the Racing Post and Corals in the know. And of course, don't forget, it's a long week. Please gamble responsibly. Thank you to Graham, Tom and David. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>